Hey everybody, hi. Kevin. Let's see, I've got a little loop going here. My loop of Grand Canyon loop. Dotted eighth notes, I discovered. Dotted eighth notes setting on your delay. It's like that uh, YouTube thing. modulation in there. Okay, let's record again.
like little birds or something. I always like making that sound. Sorry, I got a little carried away there. No. I've been a little bit uh, obsessed with that light blue guitar. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but lately I've, that's like all I wanted to play is that, that light blue one. And then like, as soon as I start playing, it's like really hard for me to put it down. So that's the thing. I, I, I'm unable to stop like once I start that one. So, um, oh, that silly loop is still going. Let me turn it off, hold on. All right, here's, here's the deal. This is the deal, all right? As far as hats are concerned, a lot of people remember their, their grandpas, their grandmas, or whoever told them, don't touch grandpa's hat, or always hold grandpa's hat by the brim. It's such a bad glare in here today. I don't know what it is, which is worse. Let me try it like this, a little lighter. Okay. Let's try this. There we go. There we go. It's a little better. All right. Don't touch the. Uh, don't touch Grandpa's hat by the brim. That's what he always said. That's like a thing. Um, all right. I've got my things too. Um, hold on. I'm gonna grab a hat from the back there. I'm gonna show you something. Hold on a second. All right. Don't touch Grandpa's hat by the bum. All right. Um, Michael was asking me about this yesterday. What's the deal? You know, like where are you? How are you supposed to put on your hat? How are you supposed to take it off? And where do you touch it? And where do you don't touch it? I've heard some people say, "Don't touch by the brim. Don't touch it by the crown. Put it this way. Put it that way. Doesn't this do bad things to it? Doesn't this make the, the crown dirty? Doesn't make the crown get out of shape? You know? All right. Essentially the the brim is the part that gets out of whack usually, okay? That usually is going to be a little bit off, um, generally because they get soft. They just keep getting softer and softer. There is stiffener that's kind of holding this shape together, okay? So in other words, they shape it with like this nice scoop, kind of a flange. See this scoop? Okay. They shape that. Picture that this is just a cone of felt, okay? Just some, you know, regular cone shape, like a hat body. That's what they start with. Plain old piece of felt, okay? So they stretch it over these molds. One of them, which is kind of like that, sort of a, you know, a mountain shape or a crown, open crown shape. And then the flange, the brim block, is essentially, think of a toilet seat, like a ring, a donut shape, or a donut. Think of a wooden donut, okay? So there's a wooden donut, a three-dimensional round donut going around here made out of wood with a hole in the middle for the crown to go through, okay? That's what you're shaping the brim on is this wooden donut, okay? So let's take the donut and let's set it on the table. We've got to raise the donut up on a little stand so it's off the table about this high. Let's put the crown into the donut now. You follow me? The donut's here, okay? We're going to fit right in this hole of this crown block. It's a, a flange, a donut-shaped toilet seat looking thing. And what happens is the brim sits on that round shape and you stretch it over it, okay? So in other words, you wet it, you heat it, you steam it, and you, you pull it over that donut, that round donut shape. So you're creating this roundness, okay? You're doing that all the way around, okay? You're doing it like that. It's a donut shape. You create this shape, the flange, okay? Then you spray it with like a, think of a lacquer, something like that, shellac, a lacquer, crystal clear from uh, Krylon. You guys know what that is, right? It's like a clear, uh, like a plasticky coating that you, you could put in a spray can, essentially, okay? That will lock that shape in. That plus the fact that it's steamed in. It's steamed in right now and it's locked in. It's also, you're stretching it around this mold. You're stretching it, you're heating it and letting it dry. All these like chemical reactions are happening to make it dry into that shape, that scooped shape to make it permanent. Um, 
all that stuff, the stretching, the heating, the cooking, and all those things are sometimes not enough. The steaming, the wetting, you know, you dry it in like an oven on the mold, you know, overnight. You need to spray it with this crystal clear spray, which locks it, and it holds it. It holds it in time, because what happens is when you're keeping it this way, nature wants it to fall down because of gravity. It's weighted, it's heavy, and it's being held up by this plastic coating stuff, okay? Now, you keep using it, you bend the front down, you bend it up, you bend it down, you get it wet on, you keep putting it on the table, keep putting it on the table. This is softening up and that plastic coating is getting little cracks in it, little microscopic folds and cracks where it's not solid and it's not a solid piece of plastic covering anymore. All these little breaks and cracks and bends build up and eventually it starts letting go and the felt droops from gravity. It becomes flatter and softer. Okay? Every time you leave the hat on the tabletop, you're putting some weight on here and stuff that's not helping. It's making it softer and stuff, okay? Every time it gets rained on, the weight of the rain is pushing it down like this, okay? It's making that curvy flange less curvy and less flangey. It's making it flat, okay? Then you take your wet hat that's in the shape of this. You put it on your tabletop and you let it dry. So gravity does its trick even more from the weight and it dries like the tabletop flat. It's falling and falling and falling and got nowhere to fall so it, it goes flat. That's as far as it can go, flat, you know? Um, you might be left with some curve, but every time you do this it gets flatter, 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 softer, softer. And just like our bodies when we age, gravity, it, it brings it down and it gets softer and, and all that stuff. Um, that's natural, all right? So you gotta think of it in terms of um, the hat has a stiffener on it. There's a curve and you want to preserve that. Okay, so any way you dry this hat tonight, it's gonna stay like that, okay? Let's think of the brim alone, all right? So if, if it dries a little uneven, like this side is really high and this side is a little flat or something, that will become my new permanent flange, just like that. So before you put the hat to bed, the wet hat, you take it and you go around with your finger, make sure it's still curvy and, and scooped and flangey like that, but you get everything even. The next day, it will look like that. There's no surprises. It hardens up just like that. You're good, okay? As far as the crown, same thing, okay? Here's the science of blocking the hat and, and all that stuff. And um, Basically, this crease here was made through, um, through the mold. There's a wooden mold or something. A lot of times people block their hats with open crown blocks and we do this by hand. In terms of a production hat like a Stetson or this and that, they don't do that. It's more custom hats, you know, like you, you buy one at a time where they make them open crown hand them hand shaped it, you know. So, for the most part, this is all done with a mold. It's in there. So if you take it out, you rub the other way, you try to destroy that shape, get it out, rub out those shapes, okay, whatever you're doing, open the crown, shape it other way, whatever you do to it, to try to mess that shape up, it's gonna, it's gonna have no effect because it's still in there. Okay, it's steamed in. There's my shape, okay? That's the same factory shape from decades ago. Right? Unless I re-steam that shape or get it wet and dry it in a different way. Dry it like this, let's say. That will become my new permanent shape. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so if I take my wet hat, do this, hang it up, do whatever Kevin says, upside down. The next day, this is my permanent shape now forever until I get it re-steamed. So in other words, the rain, when a hat gets wet and then dries, that's the exact same process as steaming. Steam and rain, same thing. If you take an open crown hat like this, okay, make one crease like that on the side 
and spray it completely wet with water, that shape will block in. It will be permanent. It will have a memory. The next day, you can poke it out and it'll poke right back to that same shape. You know, it's a memory. You just created it like blocking a hat. Same thing with steam. If you take an open crown hat, totally open, you make a whatever, a triangle, okay, steam it, that is now locked in. That's permanent, okay? So weather has the same effect, okay? So here's what you do with your crown, all right? After you come in from the rain, you're worried that your crown might dry a little funny, okay? You just take it off, you're like, oh man, I just grab it, look at that I had, okay? I don't want it to dry like that. The easiest thing is to, what you do is you open it. Just open your crown, okay? Feel for the creases very, very, very softly, and they pop, for, you know, they just pop in. Just do it slowly now, okay? There it is. It's in there. Let's try it again a different way. All right? You can see it. You can see the shapes in there. I'm going to try to open it as much as I can now. That shape's in there. Okay, let's, let's watch again. You ready? It's the factory shape that's in there, okay? I've made sure not to steam this crown because I want it to be the factory shape all the time. I don't want to change that. I like the factory shape. So in other words, when I wanted to get these pinches back, I just feel for it very gently. They're there. They're there on a 20, 30, 40, 50 year old vintage hat. They're still there. No matter how many times somebody steamed it and did this, you were really careful. Open up the crown, open it, and feel. That's blocked in there. It's not just steamed. It's blocked with the wooden block. So it's still there. There's my pinch. I just feel it very light-handed and let the felt do the work, okay? All right, so here's an open, unpinched hat. Let's feel, find the factory pinches now, okay? Gently. Just rub it gently. There it is. Soft-handed. It's there too, and I guarantee they're going to look symmetrical. There's the factory crease. Just feel for it. In other words, you're not trying to feel, to pinch it. You're trying to feel some difference. You, there's a memory in there, so you want the memory to just guide you. So I'm almost just like this, the weight of my hand. That's it. Just the weight of my hand is enough. The weight of my hand alone. There we go. This pinch is back now. Everything's in there. These, this hat is it's not going anywhere, okay? All right, off tangent now. You come in out of the rain. What you do is you open your hat and you get your factory creasing or you get your creasing that you made with your steamer, whatever you want in there. Whatever was in there before the rain, you feel and you get it back. Okay, there I go. When you look at it from a bird's eye view now, check it. Sometimes it's not perfect. You might have to just guide it a little, you know. Okay, and then I feel for my pinches. I could do them two at a time. I'm kind of used to doing this, but one at a time is good, you know. Just feel for it, okay. Now, let it dry with the factory pinches and the factory crease. Exactly how it was meant to be. Get your brim in the up position and get rid of any, you know, straighten it out. Get it all at the same flange, okay? Get this brim off the surface of the table once you got it decent, okay? And flip it like that, let it dry. Once the hat is completely dry, then you could put it in your hat box upside down, okay? Don't put it on that little cardboard rim while it's wet, okay? That'll affect the flange and stuff. Just let the flange dry like this, you know? You could give it a little help if it looks like it's not drying straight. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just the tip. We're talking about the tip of the brim, not, not all of it. So, yeah, you can guide it a little, just straighten it out. Okay, then, the hat is dry, you, you can brush it counterclockwise if you want to get the little dots from the raindrops out or any you know, darks, lights, uh, impressions, whatever, fingerprints. Um, the texture will smooth out, especially in a long hair finish like this. 
this is a like a furry finish somewhat you can see it it's a uh, silk uh, silk beaver finish um, not to be confused with a beaver head okay I don't want to disappoint a lot of beaver owners out there there might be a lot of like people who own like awesome superfly beavers at home you know what I'm talking about long hair beavers all right here's the uh, the whistle blowing mind numbing news those are not all beavers most of them are not most of them are rabbit um, there's a beaver finish, beaver finish, and then there's beaver felt, okay? So if something says long hair beaver, grand beaver, Canadian beaver, it can be all beaver, it doesn't have to be. They're referring to the finish, it's a beaver finish. A lot of hat owners don't know that. I'm going to say most hat owners don't know that. Um, Sometimes they walk in and then and they'll be like, you know, you have any beavers? And, you know, all the new jacks who work here, they don't know what a long hair beaver is. They'll be like, uh, yes, sir. And they'll show them this $650 hat that's just, you know, short hair, uh, like the natural or something. And he'll be like, no, 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 that's not what I want. You know, I want something, you know, with the fur, the long, you know, the furry ones, winter ones. But beaver, man, you know what I'm talking about? And I'll break in and it'll be like, all right, you want, he wants a beaver finish. Beaver finishes are not beaver hats. They can be. They can be ble beaver blends too. It could be beaver and rabbit. Um, but this finish is made with a machine. It, it's like it combs out. You would think it's the other way that it would start long and then they sheared it, right? And to make it shorter and shorter, but no, it starts off just regular felt. They just take hairs and they compress it into a felt, right? It goes around this huge copper cone. Cone is about, I don't know, maybe this high. We have one in the, uh, in JJ's on the catwalk. If you look up on the catwalk, we have, you know, like a, a second floor. You'll see a big copper cone from a Stetson factory and it's got little holes in it, almost like a spaghetti colander, spaghetti strainer. Then the felt goes in there centrifuges out and basically turns into a huge cone-shaped piece of felt very very compressed um, that's not really long hair or short hair it's just kind of like it's different it's almost like a little fuzzy but that stuff okay that's becomes a felt body which is it's pretty thick felt bodies go into a certain machine and they're combed out with these metal these sort of metal, uh, you know, instruments, almost like a metal comb, like a sharp metal teeth or something. And it, it rubs against this felt body in a certain way that it pulls out the fibers and it pulls them out. And they get longer and longer and longer. The felt gets a little thinner, slightly, but it starts off super thick, really thick. Come into JJ's and go into the back room one day and ask if you could, well, you don't even have to ask, you could look, there are piles of hat bodies that we make custom hats out of. Some of them are so thick, dude, they're almost like half the thickness of your pinky or something. Really thick, like if you took like four, five, six western hats, stacked them on top of each other, that's how thick the felt is, you know. Um, they sand it down, it gets sanded, you know, so, shorter 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 it's incredible and um, they sand it so fine you know um, by hand my, my hat maker does it that it feels like beaver it feels just like the he can make a rabbit hat feel nicer than a beaver hat just through buffing it you know the right way with different sandpapers and stuff all right so getting back to it not all beavers are beaver sorry to, you know it's not a big deal because um, beaver is not like the ultimate um, yeah, there, there's all kinds of great stuff out there. In fact, my favorite hats that I feel are the best hats almost ever um, are hats that are made of Nutria and wild hair. They have no beaver in it. So I like the Nutria wild hair European version because uh, beavers are not indigenous to Europe. They don't really have them out there. We've got them here in North America, in Canada, in, uh, you know, the United States like crazy they're like these pests you know they have these things where you could go and kill a certain amount of beavers because there's too many beavers and you know 
but uh, it's become this expensive thing, you know. Fur is now still a weird, sticky, you know, kind of a thing. It's, uh, it's tough, the fur industry. So, it's, um, yeah, beaver. It's like a diamond, but yeah. It's not always so great just to have beaver. There are other things out there, too. So don't uh, don't obsess on the beaver thing, um, but if it's really good and thick and quality, like let's say this Stetson uh, Metropolitan, just ask Dave. He just got his hands on one. Those things feel like they feel as nice as like you know if you've got the nicest vintage hat from Stetson's past and it was really thick, like double triple thick, you know. And it, snaps it's thick but it's got a soft like a baby soft velvet finish it's almost like fast it's so soft um there are nice beavers and then there's you know you just paid for beaver and it looks like the same crap as everything else sometimes it's not that great um beaver should have a good amount of it it should be kind of thick you know, it should perform well. If you're already seeing brims that are crooked or that are just not snapping or, you know, any issues, yeah, don't, you know, don't worry about the fact that it's made out of beaver. Just go for something else. Um, I'm not a huge beaver fan, but I love those beaver finishes, though, I gotta say. I love that. And they're also a little wintry. They're thicker and warmer, too. But, um, well, I don't even remember what the heck we were talking about at this point. It's pretty funny. Um, beaver finishes, I started getting into them. Anyway, um, what should we talk about? I think we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, about some hat care, about some general hat care things. Um, the, the stiffener on a hat is, um, it's essentially the thing that always goes on the brim. Everybody comes in with the same problems when their hats are out of whack. The brim is not doing this, it's not snapping down anymore, or it's crooked, I can't get it to go up, or you know, it won't go down, or you know, the, the brim looks like this, or whatever. It's usually that. The brim just gets too soft, you can't control it anymore. Okay? My brims are usually pretty good, and I don't do much to my hat. Um, I gotta say, I don't steam them a lot, I don't do a lot, I used to do tons of crap to my hats. And all those hats just got like, you know, I did so many projects and crap and reshaping that they, they just got so worn and messed up and creases and I gave most of them away. And then I stopped altering my hats. I found a shape and a crown that I liked and I said, I'm gonna keep them stock. You know, maybe occasionally I'll do this or something. That's, that's all most I'm gonna do to these hats. And I did, you know, one or two of them, uh, the bands had to be changed when I sweated them up or whatever. But, uh, you know, one or two of them were tight. I might have had to do something with the sweatband. But I don't do too much to my hats. What I do in terms of hat care, this is not BS. This is the, the, the truth. Um, I'm actually pretty bad to my hats. The only thing I generally do is I keep my hats upside down. Pretty much like that. Um, and it works like a charm. It works really well. Sometimes you got to dust them. You got to get packing tape and dust them. It's better to box them if you can. Even if you got an empty box, just box them upside down or something. Put two in there. You know, it doesn't matter. But um, you could put a plastic, put a plastic bag inside it, but don't tie it. Remember, there has to be air going through there. Otherwise, it'll get mold and mildew and stuff. Plastic works as a good dust cover. Um, but essentially, I don't steam my hats. Um, I used to years ago. I was really into it, and I would stand there. Then it got to the point where it's like, yeah, you're a grown man now. You can't stand there at the steamer anymore. You're here to sell hats and stuff, you know? So I wouldn't really steam anymore and do little projects. And, you know, I don't make videos in the shop. I sell. You know, I sell and I hustle. I go up and down the stairs. I work the register. I, I, you know, different problems. If somebody's got a problem with the register, I iron it out. Um, you know, I'm taking credit cards. I'm taking mail orders. Um, I'm fixing hats sometimes, steaming hats occasionally. But 
I'm not working on my hats. I have no time for it. Never. Like, never, ever. Um, I don't have the time, and I usually don't have the motivation. Like, once every once in a while, I'll dust it, you know, when it looks, like, dusty, or I'll brush it. You know, sometimes I'll pass by the brush, and I'll do the sun. But I don't steam them. I don't really get the chance to steam them. Um, or it's either that, or I'm just not motivated to anymore or something, you know? And, um, yeah, I think I'm just steaming other people's hats all day, you know, and constantly steaming, and I, I forget that I'm even wearing a hat a lot of the times, and, um, it just stays up there, and, and that's it, the end of the day, I take it off, you know, and I'm, oh, it feels so good to get that hat off after, like, you know, a ten-hour day or whatever, you know, an eight-hour day, wearing it, um, it's kind of like I wear them at work, you know, the end of the day I take it off it's funny but um, the only thing I do is I flip my brims up and I don't put weight on the brim okay what that does is first of all it saves the brim it keeps it from getting too soft it keeps the flange in it which is the number one thing that makes your hats look crappy secondly I'm picking up my hats every single time from a little bit different point. If you close your eyes, you're just picking it up, you know, different places. Every time you pick it up, it's a little different. All right, I gotta go, bye. All right, see ya. When your hat is this way, like everybody does, when it's flat, you're grabbing it in one place every time. Okay, gotta go, stop, right there. Everybody grabs it there. Let's do a slow motion. Okay, gotta go. Okay, if you stop yourself mid-grab, just stop yourself, you realize how hard you're actually grabbing that thing. You're really grabbing the hell out of it. If you do that with that pressure every single day, you're picking it up, okay, putting it on your head, you're taking it off your head, putting it down, and you put it up, lunch break. Back on your head, back on the hat rack. You know, so it's like four times at lunch, maybe twice in the morning. And then at the end of the day, you put it back on again, you get onto the train, you get home, you put it on your hat rack. So it's like four, five, six, seven, eight times you grabbed it in one day, okay? Okay, let's say three years is a thousand, okay? So a thousand times, that's like eight thousand grabs in three years. That's, that's going to just wear that one area, area out. If I sat here and 8,000 times grabbed this thing that aggressively, it would actually start to affect it. A lot of times. You don't think it is. It's a lot of times. A few hundred, not that much. 8,000 starts to add up. It's like folding an envelope. You fold it once, no big deal. You fold it five times, no big deal. Hold it 8,000 times, it's gonna rip into two pieces. It's kinda like that. It doesn't rip into two pieces, but it starts getting threadbare. You start to get a deep, deep crease, like it's like a deep, deep pinch, that starts to become a little more than a crease. It becomes like a hole. And then you got this kind of thin, worn out area, and then you've got a hole there, and then the hole gets bigger, and then you got a hole there. Then you got a whole, like, a whole circle, and the hat just looks like crap, and it's gone. All because, you know, you did this and grabbed it in the same place instead of doing this. So, well, here's the deal. When you put your hat in this position, you're setting yourself up for the grab. No matter how much you know about hats, you just do it. Maybe you'll remember to do this, like, three out of ten times. The other five times, you're just going to grab it. I know because I do it too. If my hat is like this, I grab it there, okay? And I'm the hat guy with like a quarter century of like hat knowledge in my head, you know? I'm, I know better. I still make that mistake. If you set your hat this way, you're not setting yourself up for the one-handed pinch, okay? You're not setting yourself up to pick it up there. If you put it like this, you're gonna grab it here, 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 you know, someplace there every time, different places. I know I'm overstating my case, but it's important. Um, let me get some water. Ah, 
So, for me, what I do, instead of telling people, don't grab it by the pinch, or always grab your hat by the brim, I don't do that, okay? Because that doesn't work. It doesn't work. As soon as you stick your hat like this, you're going to just do it. You're going to forget it. You're going to grab it by the pinch. I know you will because I'm the guy and I still do that. I make that mistake. So I don't tell people, grab it by the brim. Always hold your hat by the brim. It's nonsense. You can't do it. Um, what you got to do is get yourself into proper hat storage. When you get home, set your hat upside down every single time. You get yourself into that mind frame and then you're protecting the brim, okay? Because the brim's off the table, it's not getting soft. And you're protecting the crown because you're not grabbing it by the crown every single time. You're, you're, you're getting both fixed, okay? When you hang it up, okay, you're gonna grab it here. Okay, you're still getting the hole. But you, you, you fix the brim problem, okay? So what happens is most people, they get big holes here and then a small hole back there from, you know, whatever, five or ten years of hanging up their hat. I'd be like, you hang your hat, right? they be like, yeah, how do you know? Because there's a big hole there and a small hole there, which means it could be from hanging, it could be just like this, and then the guy just picks it up off the table there, or sometimes just picks it up there in the back. That's the same thing. Um, you're gonna just get holes in it, it happens. Um, every single fedora and Panama type hat, straw hat, dies one of two ways. Not everyone, but like 99% of them or something. They die from a hole here, okay, from grabbing and leaving it on the brim, okay? Don't leave your hat on the brim, you won't get the hole. Or they die from having sweat stains here, right here, okay? So the idea is when you see sweat here on the band, it's telling you you gotta change your band soon and you gotta put in a sweat wick on the inside, one of those little sweat pads. Um, I'll show you. It's called a cap band new. Um, we sell these things at JJ's, and they are they're worth it. You know, it's five bucks. It's a sticker that goes in there. All right. The only way to save your hat from getting sweaty there is putting in one of these cotton stickers. You put it up in the front. It goes between your forehead and the hat, and that's it. It's cotton. It can touch you. So. Learn about the two things. Don't wear this out. Put your hat upside down, okay? Don't sweat this up here, okay? As soon as you start to see something peeking through, you're gonna see it in two places. You're gonna see it either here by your forehead, like right here. The sweat band will start, the salt will start going right to the felt. When you start seeing it permeating into the felt, the next step is it's gonna be like a, a ring next over here, okay? When you're starting to see little signs of sweat, then you throw in your sweat wick. Don't do it from the beginning. You don't want this in your hat the whole time. You just don't want it. Um, it's uncomfortable. But when there's a point where you have no choice and your hat's gonna either get sweaty and ruined or this, you do this. The idea is you just keep changing them every month or so, every couple months, every season, every two seasons, depending on how much you wear your hats and you freshen them up and they're fine. It's 100% cotton. It's a pad, a little pad. They're incredibly absorbent and this catches the sweat and the sweat never even reaches the hat. The hat just never gets sweaty at all. So prevention is the key. That's it. Once it gets sweaty, don't ask me how do you clean it. Because the, the answer is you can't. You just don't. Your hat's toast. Okay. If you have a sweat stain that that was here and rode up to here, you could put a wider band and cover that. You put us, you have us put a nice nostalgic wide band on it, cover that. That we can do, you know what I mean? Let's say you have a stratoliner with a thin ribbon and then you got a sweat stains here. Yeah, we put a wide band on it then and you're good. But if you got sweat stains in the brim, we can't do anything. So there's nothing can be done. Prevention is the key. So you got to change this you can also change your sweat band, the leather. You could change this ribbon band too, if they're really nasty and gross too. Um, it's not terribly expensive. The sweat band can be a little bit more expensive. It's much more work though. Um, this is generally gonna be the thing that does it though, okay? Change that. Put these in, keep changing them every once in a while, freshen them up, and you won't get sweat stains. 
Okay? And those are the two ways hats always die. Alright? I see it a lot. So, you want your hat to last forever, do what I do. Keep your hat upside down. Keep the brim flipped up when you're not wearing it. Okay? And be vigilant. Watch for perspiration stains. Take care of it before it's too late. And watch for the grabbing. If you're a grabber, you're fine for a little while. Eventually, it's going to turn into a hole. And you're going to have a hole and throw your favorite hat out. So, stop doing it now. Okay? You say, well, I'm a habit. Or, I mean, I have a habit. You know? All you got to do is flip. You won't be grabbing it anymore. You're setting yourself up for that grab. How else are you going to hold this hat, you know? Of course. You see this little area in the front? It looks like a handle, you know? You're going to pick it up there. Okay, I got to go. Stop. You know what I mean? Upside down. Okay, I got to go. Good. Bad. All right. You guys get the deal, right? Overstated my case like five times or something. Um, I don't know what else to say. Sounds like that Steely Dan song, right? first one so it's again fifth fret third fret fourth fret fifth fifth fourth no third fourth so it's then bar these three Bar these three and the third. Okay, put the middle finger there and the fourth. Bring this down. Five, five, three, four. 
borrow these three and then borrow these three with this first fret. E minus seven. Or one of these. This sounds better. to show people. I think it's like uh, like one of the show off riffs, yeah. figured that out the other day while I was making the video for you guys. I thought that was pretty cool. I did know this part. Uh, I knew that part. But I didn't know that. Attitude thing. That's a. It's one of my effects, actually. I think that's doing that. I've got some kind of weird detune modulation. Actually, I'm out of tune. You take care and have a great weekend. TGIF, right? TGIF, everybody. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>